Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Low Carb in the Leaves. It's very cold out here this morning, so I have my customary blanket. I sit out here in the morning and meditate, oh. usually with the blanket wrapped around me, and then I talk to you fabulous people. Yesterday I talked about some ideas from the fabulous book Atomic Habits, written by James Clear, who has articulated very nicely this idea that core behaviour change comes from identity change. So you've got these three layers to habit change, as he describes it. On the outside, it's when you focus on your outcomes. I want to lose weight. On the next layer in, you focus on the process. So therefore, I will plan my meals and eat low-carb real food. And on the inside, there is your identity change, which is I eat well. And I have that identity now. I have this identity of someone who eats well. I have the identity of someone who meditates. I don't have the identity of someone who is organized. I wish I was um, working on it. That's working on changing my identity to an organized person with a very clear desk. Another really important aspect of behavior change, well documented in the literature, is the Q behavior reward. So I'm a big fan of journaling. I'm a big fan of, of thinking about what you want to get out of life, thinking about where you are now, where you want to get to, and trying to map out a way to get there. Because change is possible. It's a bit tricky. It's a bit hard. It's a bit slippery. But it is totally possible. So if you've got a behaviour that is undesirable, this is behaviour that you want to stop. Sometimes stopping a behaviour is a little bit harder than starting a new one, sometimes. So if you're eating the chocolate on the couch, if you're overeating at night, if you keep filling up your plate, um, if you watch telly in the morning instead of going for a walk or doing mindfulness, something that would help you rather than perhaps sitting down watching the depressing news is not helping you, think about what is the cue. There's always a cue with a habit. That a trigger, something that makes you do it. It could be as simple as I get up in the morning and I turn the telly on, or it might be a little bit more complicated. I get stressed at work and I reach for the bowl of M&Ms. And then there's the behavior. That's the thing that you don't like, but there's always a reward. Short-term behaviors, short-term habits always give us some kind of a reward. And you want to try and think about, well, what do you get out of this behavior? Why do you sit in front of the telly when you'd rather be going for a walk? Is it that it's just immediately self-soothing? Is it that it's distracting because your thoughts aren't pleasant? What is it? Why do you reach for the M&Ms when you're stressed? That's usually a bit easier because it's usually, you know, a bit of a dopamine rush. It soothes us. It um, gets some nice chemicals in our brain. Is it, is it a moment to yourself? Maybe you can go into the tea room at work and just have a moment to yourself think about it even just journal it doesn't have to be a fancy journal you can write it on a scrappy piece of paper and try and tease out what are you getting out of this undesirable behavior the behavior that's not aligned with your goals and then think about how you can replicate it when i was first learning about this cue behavior reward stuff years ago years and years and years, and years ago our instructor used the example of a patient of his where they were a smoker and they didn't like smoking. Smoking wasn't in line with their health goals. And then after learning about the Q habit reward model, this man who was a smoker um, hopped into his car that night after learning about this, this particular module this, and this idea and went to light up his cigarette and then just stopped for a minute. He's like, what do I actually, what is the reward that I get here? I know I'm addicted to the nicotine, but what reward do I get from having this cigarette? And he decided it was the, just the mindful breathing. And I, I honestly believe this is a significant part of cigarette smoking. It's complex, it's the only thing that's going on, but it is part of it. And just taking a break, and a moment to was extremely rewarding to this guy. And so he decided that he could do that without putting the cigarette in his mouth, which of course he could, and he never smoked again. So that's a beautiful example of 
disrupting this cue behavior reward idea and trying to hijack it in a way that's more healthful. So beautiful humans, cue, trigger, behavior, the thing you do that is either good, working towards your health goals or less good, not as helpful, taking you further away from your health goals and the reward. What is the short term reward that you get? And the thing is that often undesirable, less helpful behaviors give us a short term reward that's that's that is really quite powerful, like the dopamine surge, like the distraction. But often the more healthful and helpful goals, the immediate short term reward might not be as powerful. Um, and sometimes you might need to insert that in. So eating eggs and bacon for breakfast is not as immediately rewarding for your brain as Cocoa Pops because you don't get that sugar rush and the dopamine rush. Um, however, if you can just have a little moment to celebrate the fact that you had a beautiful, healthy breakfast, do a little dance, put a little bit of a reward in there yourself, then you are bringing the reward into the present moment, which I might talk about more tomorrow. Bringing the reward into the present moment with healthful behaviours is very helpful. Okay. See you later, beautiful people. Have a fabulous day. Ooh, and don't forget to check out our podcast on hypnotherapy and meditation that was published yes, today. Yes, I had to look up, think about my days. Uh, it is Our podcast is called Real Health and Weight Loss and it's full of lots of wonderful gems to help you live your best, most healthy life. See ya.